it is over here. Uh, okay. So, um, welcome everyone to the second session of the evening. Um, as our next speaker, we have uh, Denisha Malone from uh, Texas USA. Um, she loves to teach about uh, BI, best practices and data storytelling, and also about Power BI administration. And that's um, the thing she's going to talk about uh, tonight or uh, tomorrow or to, uh, uh, this morning, uh, where, wherever you are uh, uh, on the globe. Um, so, Denisha, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nick. Let me share my screen. Hi, everyone. I know everyone's muted. This is a little different for me because I like to hear people talking and see people's faces, but it's okay. You know, this is the new normal. So hi to everyone. Um, if you have any questions, I don't know if there's a formal way, but feel free to put them in the chat um, or you can click the raise hand. I'll definitely give you some a moment of my time. All right. Um, I'm sharing my screen. Are you able to see? Uh, yes, you can see your screen. Oh, okay. Okay, great. So, uh, well, once again, my name is Denisha Malone. Welcome to this session. Thank you for coming. Thanks for listening. Today, I'll be talking and sharing with you guys how to automate Power BI administration using the PowerShell command lists. The agenda, uh, pretty straightforward. There's two things I'm going to primarily show you when it comes to PowerShell and Power BI administration. The first one is commandlets for Power BI management in PowerShell. And the second, which is my favorite, is the REST APIs to automate the administration and the monitoring. A little bit about me. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee, USA, born and raised. Um, I'm known as the Power BI Queen. I've been a Power BI advocate since its general availability in 2015, about two years before my college graduation. Power BI Premium is my primary structure. I love to work in a premium environment with large enterprises. I handle the administration and the mass user training. I've been professionally speaking at over 30 user groups um, since 2018, and it's something I really I really, really enjoy helping people understand the application. I do have an online um, school called Power BI Kingdom that has some free classes that I teach across the globe. My hobbies outside of work are helping nonprofit tech companies or uh, organizations, mentoring, international travel, and just business development in general. Okay, PowerShell for Power BI management. So what are the benefits of PowerShell? Before I go into this, I want to tell everyone that I am new to PowerShell. So PowerShell is a new skill for me. So if there's anyone out there who's really good at PowerShell, this is an extreme beginner's introduction to it. If you have any tips to make this better, then definitely reach out to me and, and give me some, some best practices. So some benefits to using PowerShell. Well, one, let me actually go out of this and go to the reading view. Okay. So first benefit, uh, you can get fast access to hard to get information. Uh, this information in most cases is usually available. You can get information, but you have to manually get it. So because it's manually accessible, it's very time consuming to get the information. So with, with um, PowerShell, you can get access to the, that information really fast. The second, a second benefit is that you can automate tedious tasks. So what this means is that um, you can audit, you can, PowerShell gives you the ability to create scripts. So instead of mainly completing tasks that are recurring tasks that you do over and over again, then you can create a script and run that script every time you want that task to be done, or you can put that script on some kind of timer or a scheduler and get that done automatically instead of um, manually doing that really boring task. Um, these these schedulers, there's a task scheduler on your Windows PC that you can run PowerShell script, scripts with, 
Or if you are a SQL person, then you can create a SQL job that includes that REST, AP, that REST API or that script. Another benefit is that you can complete large jobs really quickly. So bulk imports, um, bulk exports, bulk migrations, all these things where you have to move a lot of things, you can do that really fast with PowerShell. Um, these large jobs can be time consuming um, to finish using some kind of interface. Uh, and it can be really boring because you're, you're doing the same thing over and over again. So PowerShell does have commands to manage those large jobs um, really quickly and really, really easily. OK, so a few use cases for PowerShell. These are real life use cases. Um, they've come from previous customers of mine, and I've used PowerShell or REST APIs to resolve their problem. The first use case is if the, um, the chief technology officer, the CTO, and that the director of BI, they're in a meeting, and you as the BI admin, you get a chat request, and they're asking for a list of workspaces, the list, a list of data sets and dashboards across the tenant. So they want to know, um, give me all of the workspaces, even accounts, maybe they want to count all of the workspaces, and they want detail for that while they're in that meeting. If you're manually doing that, that's going to take longer than 30 minutes. So with PowerShell and with REST APIs, you can create a, a quick a quick script to get that answer from them using, as an admin, you would use the Get Power BI Workspace command, the Get Power BI Dashboard, and the Get Power BI Dataset. And you can use those command lists to either count or get a list of detail of information. Another use case is if the gateway fails overnight, causing the refreshes to fail. So you as admin, you've been asked to export a list of re report admins. So you want to know every report user that monitors or that handles um, that Power BI report that's failed because you want to communicate those failures. Another very manual task, you can go through all the workspaces, pull out all the admins. You can manually do this, but using PowerShell, and REST APIs, you can run a script to get the get the refresh history to see what report has failed. You can get the gateways, automate this process, get gateways to see based on that refresh that's failed, what gateway is that connected to and did it fail because of a gateway. And also you can get activity events. The activity events will allow for you to see who is admin based on that. It's going to show their email address the email address of the admins um, of the workspaces. So you can see who is administrating workspaces, and then you can link that to the Git refresh history and see who's admin of that workspace of that data set that's failed, and then ultimately see what gateway is causing that problem. And so using that entire use case, you can produce a list of report admins to communicate those refresh failures to. The third use case is if a workspace has been mistakenly deleted because it was thought to be a duplicate, which happens all the time. Not all the time, but it happens more often than it should. A workspace can be deleted, and it turns out that workspace is high priority production, and we have to restore it for, predict for the business to resume. So what you can do is there's a restore power bi workspace command and that's just going to restore that workspace that was deleted so very easy you can't you can't even do that manually so that's not even a manual task um, but you can do it with commands the last use case for this demo is if a department is updating the names of all of their servers and they want to get a list of production reports that are connecting connecting to the existing server that they're going to change so another very manual task um, that that's possible but with a powershell you can get data sources in group so uh, based on your admin rights you can get the data sources for every report that's inside of the group that you're admin of without even downloading the report and that's the demo i'm going to show you today and that's very helpful when knowing what reports are being connected to what sources Okay, so before I go over installing the module, I'm going to show you all this documentation. 
This is the PowerShell, the Microsoft um, documentation for PowerShell and Power BI command lists. I think Microsoft does a really good job with documentation, documenting processes and um, additions to their applications. So in this page, you can see all of the modules, all the module names and how to install it. Even though I'll show you guys how to do this, it shows how to install, how to uninstall and um, pretty much the scope of using it. Even how to log in and log out, but I'll be showing you how to do most of these things. Today in this demo, we'll be using the roll up module. So because we're going to, um, they have these individual modules just in case you only want to look at admins, you only want to look at capacities, you know, if you want to be more specific, but I suggest using the roll up because it's going to include everything. So I'm going to just copy this. So I have it in my clipboard. Now let's go back. Okay, so now I have my module copy, which is there. I want to run the PowerShell ISE as administrator. This is important to remember because you cannot run, you can't install any modules if you're not running the ISC as an administrator. All right, once you run it as an administrator, we're going to install this module and then we're going to, um, we have to approve the repository. If this is your first time access, accessing PowerShell, installing this module, it's going to ask if you want to install NuGet. NuGet is installed with PowerShell if you if you approve it. So you can approve it and then it's going to install and you won't have to do that again. And then we're going to refresh to see our new command lists. Okay. So let's go do a demo using some basic command lists. So I have my PowerShell down here. I'm going to run as an administrator. All right, so here is my PowerShell window. It's blank here is the command. This is the command pane. So sometimes it looks like this and then you have to extend it showing, oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. You have to show the command add-ons here and to see the commands. Okay, the first thing we want to do here, I actually think I have it already installed. So I'm gonna show you this uninstall step because I think I have it installed already. So I'm gonna uninstall and then reinstall. So I click, un I kind of type in, I start to type in uninstall and you start to see it kind of pops up. I'm just going to put the name of the module here that I'm gonna remove. And then run that. Okay, you see down here still running the script in the down left corner. So we have to wait till that's done. Okay, so now we don't have the module. Now we want to get it. So let me just type in install here. And now we see install module. And we're going to just put that name back right there in the parameters. Click run. All right, it's going to ask if I trust the repository. I'm going to say yes to all. Okay. All right, so now that's completed and I have installed my module. Let's just check to make sure that we have Power BI commands. So over here in the commands, I'm gonna click refresh. And I'm gonna type in Power BI. There, and now I have all of these Power BI commands that come within module. So that's, that's good, we're up to date. Okay, now let's test before we go and look at REST APIs. I want to show you some basic command lists just using PowerShell. So first I want to log in and log out because you have to show PowerShell that you're an actual Power BI user. And the easiest way to do that is just type in login dash Power BI and it starts to populate. All right. Now with PowerShell, when you log in, you actually have to do a logout as well because it's a script. So we have to type in logout and then there's a logout dash PowerShell there. I'm sorry, dash Power BI. Okay, now let's test to just make sure that we're able to log in. So I'm gonna run the script here. Okay, I do get my little login window right here. And I'm just gonna pick the account that I want to log in with. 
and then it logs in, it logs me in here. So I see that I have a pub, a public environment. Here's my tenant ID and here's my username. So I'm successfully able to log in. But that doesn't give me any information about my tenant. So now let's use these command lists to figure out some information. The first use case that we talked about was that if a CTO and your manager was in a meeting and they wanted to know some information about the workspaces while they're in that meeting. So let's give them two, two types of information. The first thing we're going to do is count the workspaces. So how many workspaces do we have in our tenant? Okay, so what we're going to do is create an item because we're, we're counting something. We have to create an item to count. So we create an item here. And we're going to make that equal to the workspaces because that's what we want to count. So over here in the command pane, I'm going to just start typing in workspaces. Now I have these command lists and I don't want to add a workspace user. I want to get get the list of workspaces so I can count them. So I have the get Power BI workspace here. I'm going to copy that and paste that to the right of the equal sign. So now that I've defined the item, I want to create a um, create a action. The action I'm going to do here is count. So I'm going to put item here again. Um, that should say items with an S. And this one should be dot count because this is the action. All right, so I'm going to count those items and the items are going to be the workspaces. So now let's run this. It's going to ask me to log in again. Uh, let's log in here. And now I see I have five workspaces. So I have the count very quickly. I can either send that count in a chat message or I can go a step further like what we're about to do and get details of those five workspaces. But just like that, without opening up Power BI, I can see how many workspaces I'm admin of. You have to remember that these are, you can only do PowerShell scripting for workspaces that you're an admin of. So now that I have the count, I want to create a list of workspaces. Okay, so let's remove the count here. I'm gonna just start from scratch since I'm teaching you all a new skill. And we're gonna clear out our campaign down here. So now we want to count those five. We want to get details for those five workspaces that we just counted. So because I'm still doing a command on workspaces, I'm gonna keep this get Power BI workspaces because I still want to get information about the workspaces. But here I'm going to click on my details. So I click show details. So now I see my parameters. I'm going to click on the all and just choose this all option because I want details for all of the workspaces. Okay, there's a few things here. Let me go back and show you. You can filter so you can say only give me workspaces with a title of this or workspaces that were published in the past six days. You can have filters here, um, but we're going to get a list of, of everything. Okay, I'm going to copy this and put that here with the parameter. So you see all it did was add an extra parameter at the end. Once you become a PowerShell Pro, then you, you can do this without extending, you know, extending the parameter list. Okay, so let's run this. Uh, so log in again, use that same account. Okay, so now I have one, two, three, four, five. Here are those five workspaces, and I have some details about them. I have the workspace ID, the name of the workspace, if it's read only, if it's premium, if it's dedicated premium capacity. And then you have some more things here, um, just in case, you know, if it was premium, you would have a capacity ID. If the user had a description, you have a description. Um, you, is it, Orphan, this is a really important one, is orphan. That lets you know if there is an admin in that space or not. Um, sometimes when you're in a business and you have an admin in a workspace, it's possible for the admin to leave the company and that workspace no longer has an admin. It becomes orphan. Um, and so that's, you see all of these are not orphans. So that's a good, that's a good thing to use too. Okay, um, these spaces are empty, so you don't see anything here. Um, if this, these are full workspaces, then a lot of a lot more detail will be here. But you see there, you can literally see everything that's involved with that workspace um, using this command. 
Okay, so we have this information, but we have this information, but you can't really do much with this in PowerShell if we want to send this to someone. So uh, we know and we've confirmed that this is what our manager wants to see. So let's get this into a CSV file so we can we can send it via email. All right, so we're going to keep what we have here because we, do, we still want a list of workspaces. What we're going to do is create a line here. Uh, this input output line, one side is input, right side is output. And in this case, our output is going to be a CSV file. We're inputting a list of all the workspaces. We want our output to be a CSV file. So over here in the commands, we're going to type what we want. We want to export a CSV. So export CSV is here. Now we have to add in some parameters. So PowerShell knows where to export. OK, our input object. That shows that it's required, but because we have this line with the input object on the left, then PowerShell automatically knows that the left of this line is the input object. So we don't have to put anything here. We're going to check no type information and add a path. So the path is going to be where we want that CSV file to be. And in my case, I'm going to put that CSV file in my C drive in this folder. So let's put the full path here and we actually want to name that file. So give that file a name and we're going to call it workspaces. Uh, work workspaces. <laughs> All right, so now we have uh, where we want our file to go. We're going to copy that and paste it to the right of the line. So it should look something like this. All right, and now let's run it. Make sure you sign in with the same tenant. All right, so now that's completed. Now let's go to this path and see if we actually have a file that's been placed there. Let's see. All right, so here's my local drive. Uh, looks like we're going to the Power BI admin folder. Here's that workspaces CSV that was just dropped off. Um, same, we're in the same time. So there's that CSV file. Now if we were to open that to see what that looks like. Here it is. So we get this very nice Excel table that looks like what we saw in PowerShell. So we have the ID, we have the name, a very great tabular setup of this um, same information. But now the user can do more with this. Um, you can create a script that runs this maybe once a week, maybe once a month, and have that export into maybe a SQL server, and you can create a Power BI, a Power BI report off of this. Um, so there's a lot you can do with having that tabular export of information. All right. So um, I'm going to jump and talk about REST APIs. Let me clear this. We're going to keep our login log out because we're going to use that a little more. OK, let's go back here. All right, REST APIs. REST APIs are great when automating administrative tasks in Power BI. So what are REST APIs and what, what does its benefit in Power BI? So a RESTful API or REST API is an application program interface, hence API, that uses HTTP requests to get, put, post, and delete data. Okay. Using Power BI REST APIs, you can embed reports, embed dashboards and tiles for report consumers. You can perform management tasks on Power BI objects, which is what we're going to do today. You can monitor and support users and stakeholders. So you can monitor what users are doing. You can monitor resource activity. You can do all of that using REST APIs. You can authenticate in, in Power BI. So if you're creating Azure apps or doing anything extensive with embedding, you can use PowerShell and REST APIs to authenticate. And so much more. There's so much you can do. And I'll show you all right now uh, a list of those REST APIs. So let me close this. Here is the Microsoft documentation site about Power BI REST APIs. And if you are a Power BI admin, 
then this should be like the pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. I love this site. Um, I keep it, it's up here. I keep it tagged because I'm always on it. But there's so many um, different ways you can monitor your environment by using a REST API from this list. I'm going to show you the most common used ones, but literally there's all of them you can use at least once. Okay, so the first one will be in this admin. So under admin, you can get activity events. This was mentioned a little earlier um, in one of the use cases. Using get activity events, you can see uh, a list of activity events for a tenant. So it's like an audit list. It shows when someone publishes something, when someone edits, everything that's possible in Power BI to be done by a user. You can get it by, um, you can see and monitor by using this Get Activity Events API. Okay. Um, previously, I would say prior to, there's no date on here. This is a very new API. Before this exists, I would have to connect to Azure and pull in Azure audit logs. And um, this is, these are all the operations available. But now, because this is a REST API, you get these same operations by pulling that REST API. So you can see when a, when a user did all of these things, there's so many here, you see, deleted a folder, uh, edited a data flow, exported something, install, install the app. Every, every little operation that's possible by a user, it comes in with this audit log and you can track that. It gives you, let me go back here. It gives you um, the time they did it the actual operations, so view report, delete report, um, view app, whatever operation it is, and it gives you the user ID. So this is how you, this is where you would get to see who is who and what they're doing, okay? There's no direct column here, identifier, that tells you that this person is an admin or not, but previously what I've done is that I've done a distinct export of operations and then define which operations are an admin operation versus a free user or pro user operation. Um, so that's that's the way that I determine, you know, is admin versus just is a is a user, is a content user. So that's great when when it comes to monitoring auditing events. Uh, another really good one is in the capacities here. And it is the group assignment capacities. Um, this one. Group capacity assignment status. Here it is. So this one gives you, if you're premium, if you're not premium, then just cover your ears for a second. This is not, this, this has nothing to do with pro users or free users. But if you're using premium, then this API will show you what group is assigned to what capacity without going into the capacity settings. This is really helpful if you're creating a monitoring dashboard and you want to be able to switch between capacities and see refresh history, see user activity based on capacity. So I always bring this in as an option to create capacity filters, um, which, is, which is really good when, when working with premium environments. Okay. Before I go to the next one, I want to show you all um, the, this here. So everything over here. Oh, wait, this isn't a good example. Let me go to the next one. OK, the next one is data sets. So data sets, these APIs, there's a lot here. And there's a lot here because these are the ones that are mostly used. Most people want some kind of monitoring on data sets, some kind of automation based on a data set. And so there are a lot of options here. Um, something that I use, I'm going to show you three of them that I use often. The first one is the get refresh history. Okay, let me go to get refresh history in group because there's a difference. And he here's what I wanted to show. If you look here in the column to the left, there's two of everything. There's two of everything. There's a get data sources, get data sources in group, get gateway, get gateway in group. So the basic one, the one without the end group does an API against your personal workspace. So the only benefit to this is that you don't have to be admin to, to run these, these APIs. As long as you have 
information in your personal workspace, then you can run this API. The in group, those are external workspaces outside of your personal workspace. So you have to be an admin to run the API to get information from, from this. This get refresh history is every customer that I come in contact with as to be their Power BI admin, I start off with this to start them a monitoring report. This shows you every morning, every six hours, whenever you want the refresh history. So what's happening with your refreshes? Um, from this, you are able to see the refresh type. So if, it, if it's via API, that means that we, we're pushing off refreshes based on the API, which I'll show you today as a demo. That refresh is going to be via API. You also have scheduled refreshes, which you know you schedule it in the service. You have on-demand refreshes. So if someone goes and clicks the refresh on demand, you can also have those as refresh types. You're going to have the start time and end time. This is really helpful when determining um, parallelism if you're if you're using a premium environment. If you're premium, then you know that you can only refresh a specific amount of reports at one time based on your premium level. So knowing that you can only refresh a certain amount at one time, this helps you figure out what's scheduled to refresh at a certain time or what's refreshing at a certain time and how long that refresh is lasting. So a really good thing you can do here is create a duration based on the start time and end time to, to measure report performance. You have the status here, so you'll see if it's completed or if it's failed or if it's in progress. And um, if it's failed, there's going to be another value here for the reason. You have a, a reason why it failed. And that reason is very specific. So you don't even have to go into the report to see, you don't have to go into the settings to see why it failed because this API is gonna show you if it's a gateway reason, if it's a data table that, that's been deleted, every, every reason is gonna show. So that's really helpful. All right, the next um, really good one that I use is the get refresh schedule, which go hand in hand with this refresh API. Where is it? Get, here it is, right under it. So this one is, uh, if you don't want to use the get refresh history to determine the schedules, because it's possible that a refresh had to wait to start. So it could have been scheduled at 8 a.m., but it had a wait time of 10 minutes, so it started at 8.10. And that won't really help you when aligning resources for refreshes. So this get refresh schedule will give you um, the refresh schedule for every data set in that group. So that's very helpful. It gives you the exact time, the day, and if it's enabled, the time zone, and also what happens if it fails. So it gives you all that information. And um, for me, this is helpful because what I do is I create a filter based on time, and I filter the time to see what's, what's expected to be refreshed, um, and if we actually have enough availability to add in another refresh um, if, if that's needed. So that's really helpful, especially in premium, because premium is really, um, you know, it's based on how many refreshes you have at one time. You can easily run out of resources. All right, the next um, really helpful I one I want to show is the refresh data set. This one is very popular. Um, everyone loves this one, and it's really because you're able to refresh your data set as soon as data is available. You still have to you still have to respect any kind of limitations you have in Power BI because it's still going to refresh from the gateway. But you can refresh data. You don't have to worry about a schedule. So in, in the past, when a, a business has an ETO, they have a process that's loading in data into a server they want their Power BI report to refresh as soon as that data is marked complete. So as soon as that load is complete, they want the Power BI report to refresh, regardless if it's 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., whatever time is done. You cannot do that in Power BI service. There's no way you can do that. So the only way is to use this refresh data set API, and you will put it at the end of your job. So you have your ETL job, and when that ETL's job is done, then now you have this refresh job that's happening. 
that's the successful way that that's worked for us in the past. And I'll show you how to do this um, using PowerShell. But this is a really helpful one. Everyone loves it. Um, so that's that. The last one I want to show you is the Get Data Sources in Group, which is another one that I'm going to demo. This one um, we, we talked about in a use case. If you're switching servers or if you just want to know what your reports are using. So you want to know um, if you're using any SQL servers, if you're using any web connectors, if you're using any Excel files. One of my customers, none of their none of their reports should be connected to Excel files. So they wanted to know if anyone was connecting to an inappropriate Excel file. And we use this to figure that out without having to go into each workspace and see. So this is really helpful when just needing to know what needing to know what's in that report. And here's the how that response looks. You get the data source type. So if it's a file, if it's a SQL Server, Oracle, analysis services, you get that there. Um, you get the gateway ID, which is really helpful because then you can connect to the gateway API. And then you have your connection details. So if it's a server, you get the server name, the database name. If it's um, a web URL, then you're going to get that URL here in the connection details. Oh, here, like this right here. So a lot of a lot of good information here without even having to download that report. OK, so let me go back. We are going to demo using the REST API method. Let me, um, the first one we're going to demo is this. So let me go up and kind of show you how you use this document. So you found the API you want to use. In this case, we're going to, we're going to demo this one first, get data sources in group. What we're going to do is copy this HTTP request. Okay, but we don't want to copy the whole thing because we only want the URL, so we only want this part. This get, this is the method. So we can have get, post, delete, put. We, have, we can have different methods here based on what we're trying to do in the API. So we're going to just remember that this is a get because we have to tell PowerShell that. But we're going to copy the URL. And if you're looking at this URL, you see that there is a space, a placeholder for group ID and data set ID. That's going to come from the actual URL of the report. OK, and we'll get that. We're going to get that in a little bit. But let's make sure we copy this. I think I just copied it, but let me do it again. OK, we're going to remember that this is Git. So now that I have that copy and have that in my mind, let's look. Let's look at this. So this is a breakdown of that URL of how to actually make the call to Power BI. So first you want to connect to the invoke REST method, invoke Power BI REST method in PowerShell. You're going to choose your method, which is the git. All right, you're going to add the URL. This is you're, you're doing these things in the parameter of PowerShell, which I'll show you in a bit. And you're going to update these group and data set parameters. This down here, this is the URL from a Power BI report. And you see here behind the word groups, there's an ID. That's the group ID. Behind data sets, there's an ID. That's the data set ID. Very easy, easy to find, easy to replace in your in your HTTP request. So let's try this. Let's try this out. So I'm gonna open up my PowerShell. You remember you have to make sure it's you're opening up the ISE as an administrator. So the first thing I want to do is invoke the Power BI REST method. So over here in my commands, I'm going to type the word invoke. So I have all of these things here, and here's the Power BI REST method. OK, as soon as I click, click that, I have my parameters that expand. So this first two, these are the ones that we talked about. The method is git, and we're going to paste that URL there. We're going to paste this URL using these placeholders because we're going to change the placeholders over here in our actual pane, scripting pane. So now we have the method, we have the URL. None of this other stuff is required, but you can add a body just in case you want something to respond once you once you do it. But we we only want to run the call. We don't want anything to result from from that except for the call to be ran and the data sources. To we want we want a result from the data sources. So let me copy that and paste it in between our login log out because we still need to log in with Power BI. Now I have my Power BI REST method git 
here's my URL, but I need to fix this URL. So let me go to the report. Here is my report. I am my workspaces. I have a COVID-19 report. I am in my data set settings for this master report that I want to figure out what data sources are being used and I need the connection details. So here, while this is highlighted, I see my URL here. I have my data set ID. I'm going to copy my data set ID from here. And we're going to paste that right here. And then we're gonna go get the group ID. So here's my group ID behind the word groups. Let's copy that. And the group ID is just the workspace ID. So now I have my full URL. Now let's run that to see if we can get a list of data sources that's in that report. Okay, I have to connect to the space that I'm logging into that report with. So now here's my result. I see that this report has four connections. All four connections have a data source type um, as web. So there are four web connections. And then they're being connected to a GitHub. So here's the URL to that GitHub. So I can directly copy that there, go to the URL. I can um, send this over to someone. So maybe they can make their own report using the same connections. Um, so many things I can do. But here I see those details without downloading that report. Okay, the next example I will do is uh, refreshing that same data set. I want to refresh it. So I'm going to take away this whole thing so I can, we can step by step over again. The first thing I want to do to create a REST API in PowerShell is to invoke the Power BI REST method. So now I have the invoke Power BI REST method here. We're going to remove what we have already. And now let's go to the documentation page that tells us about refreshing the data set. So we want to refresh data set in a group to trigger the refresh for the data set. So this one is a post. You see, that's a post method. So we're going to remember that post method, copy the URL. Here, you remember that method is post. And we're going to paste the URL here. Copy it, release the placeholders there. Paste here in the scripting pane. Now I have my method post, I have my invoke. Let's update this URL to use the right data set and group ID. You remember that comes from the URL, the same, the same data set settings URL because that's where the refresh happens. So let's just copy that data set ID behind the data sets. And oh, that's not the right one. And a group ID here. Okay, so this looks like it refreshed on August 12th. This was the last refresh. So let's, let's see if that's going to update to today's date. Okay, I hope someone's crossing their fingers for me. Drum roll, doo doo doo. Okay, so let's run this. Uh, we're going to connect using the right user. Okay, so we didn't have, we didn't put anything in the body which is fine because we didn't want, we don't have a body. We don't have any messages to send. Um, but if you wanted this to be, if you wanted an alert to go out when, when this refresh is done, say you can add in a body here, but we're not doing any of that. So now let's see if that's completed. Let's see if that actually worked. Refresh the page. Great. Okay. So just now today, um, the same at the same time it is now, it refreshed. So that's great. And it refreshed. It's showing on demand. It's going to show on demand in the Power BI service. But if you do get refresh history API, that's going to show via API. So that's the only place you see via API as a type. Um, but here it's going to show as an on demand refresh. Um, and you see it completed.
Okay. All right, that handled that demo. All right, any questions? Uh, no, there's no questions in the chat so far, but uh, great content, um, Anisha. Thank you, thank you so much. Well, if no one thinks of any questions, or maybe you think of one later, then you can, I am on Twitter, you can tweet me, or you can send me an email directly. My email is to the right down here. Send me an email and let's, we can talk this out. I can help you um, with any kind of use case that you may have, or we can just talk PowerShell and Power BI. Well, thank you everyone so much. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, check out my website. Um, I hope to hear from someone soon. Thank you, Nick, Mark, for having me. Yes, thank you, uh, Denisha, for uh, for presenting and sharing your knowledge. Um, it was a great session, and as I'm a Power BI administrator myself, for a premium capacity also, I'm uh, I'm loving this. So uh, great. Yeah. I did some things with PowerShell, but not all the things you showed. So uh, I'm definitely uh, going to check this out. Well, that's good to hear. Let me know if I can help with anything further. Yeah, I will. I will. Um, okay. So we'll be in here a few minutes if you have any questions, but um, otherwise I'd like to thank you for uh, being here. Um, our next meetup will be in uh, October uh, 8, so in, in roughly uh, uh, three weeks, um, where we will have a newcomer session about uh, uh, Power BI data modeling and also um, a session about um, how to use tabular editor uh, with Power BI. Um, so let's leave it at that and um, let's say uh, a good night or good evening, good morning <laughs> to everyone. Thank you.